Hello again, and welcome back to another episode of FSD TV. I'm your host, Mark Sunny, and we have a returning teacher with us today in Melissa Anderson. You may remember her from drawing the American alligator. Today, she's going to show us how to draw the Smith's red knee tarantula. I'm a little nervous, so let's see it. Hi, Fullerton Scholars. My name is Miss Anderson, and I'm so excited to have you join me for our lesson today. Today, we're going to learn about a spider called the Smith's red knee tarantula including how to draw it. To follow along today, all you need is a piece of paper, a pencil, and a positive attitude. Remember that there are no mistakes in art, and if your tarantula looks a little different than mine, that's okay. Before we dive into our art today, let's take a moment to plan our piece. Now, the Smith's Red Knee Tarantula is one of over 700 different species of tarantulas. Like other spiders, they have eight legs, and like other tarantulas, they're bigger than what we might think of as our average household spider. Now, when we start drawing, we want to keep in mind that their bodies can grow up to two inches long and their legs can reach lengths of up to three inches. That means they're about the size of an adult hand. With this in mind, we want to lay our paper out horizontally to make sure we have enough room for a spider's body and legs. To start today, we're going to do two ovals and we're going to use those as the guiding lines to make our tarantula's body. First, starting around the middle of our paper, we're going to make an oval that's a little bit more wide than it is tall. And this is going to be our tarantula's carapace, or what we think of as its head. Next, we're going to make a long oval that lies diagonally to make our tarantula's abdomen, or what we think of as its body. And if your ovals aren't perfect, that's okay. Next, we're going to draw the tarantula's pedipalps and fangs. We'll start with the fangs at the front of our carapace or head by drawing two ovals in the center of our carapace. Now, the tarantula uses its fangs to bite and eat its prey. So to give a hint of those fangs, we're going to go ahead and draw what looks like triangles kind of peeking from underneath our tarantula. Now the pedipalp look a lot like spider legs, but these actually have a special function. The tarantula uses these limbs to hold and crush their prey. To draw these, we're going to use an S shape, and we're going to go a little bit to the side of our fangs. This should look like an extended S. Next, we're going to make a U-turn or curve around and follow that line back up and close it off with a curve to make one pedipalp. We're gonna follow the same procedure on the other side, except this time we're gonna curve our S the opposite direction. Now, these features are especially important for tarantulas such as the bird-eating goliath, or the goliath bird-eating tarantula. Now, some tarantulas have been known to eat small animals like snakes and birds. So these limbs are especially important features. Next, we're gonna draw a tarantula's eyes. Now tarantulas have eight eyes. The Smith's red knee tarantula has two central eyes. So first above our fangs, we're gonna draw two small circles and you can go ahead and color them in now. The other eyes are in sets of three surrounding those two medial eyes. So we're going to draw three smaller circles, or even three dots, around the outside of those two larger circles. Now, tarantulas don't have especially sharp eyesight despite all their eyes. Most of what they sense is light and motion. In fact, they rely on vibrations to sense their prey. And this is part of what makes them amazing nighttime hunters, because they don't need the light to catch their prey. Now we're ready to add some more detail by putting in our spinnerets. Now these are at the back of our abdomen, so we're gonna go to the back side of our spider and draw what look like two C's or little waves. So I'm gonna do a C shape here and a small C shape on the other side, like a set of parentheses. I'm gonna go ahead and move from the point of these parentheses into the abdomen to make that wave shape that we talked about. Now this feature of the tarantula, like for other spiders, is used to make silk. 
but unlike other spiders, tarantulas usually don't live in webs. They use their silk as they protect their dens and burrows because these spiders actually live underground. They may put these webs against the walls or the doors of their homes to protect themselves from predators. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and add in our legs. So as we stated earlier, these tarantulas do have eight legs like other spiders. To make our legs, we're gonna follow the same procedure we used when we made our pedipalps. We're gonna start on the side that's facing us and we're gonna use that same backward S shape as we go along the side of our tarantula. Moving next to my pedipalp, I'm gonna use that same S shape and curve it outward from my spider to make one of my first legs. I'm gonna curve around and follow that line back up to close that leg off. Now when I make my next S shaped leg, I'm gonna go pretty close to this leg because these legs are kind of gonna be hiding behind one another. To do this, I'm gonna go ahead and curve first, attaching it to my previous leg, but I'm gonna spread the tip of my leg or the curve of that S just a little farther to spread out the base of those legs. And again, I'm gonna curve around and follow that line up to close off my leg. We want our third leg to be in between our carapace and our abdomen or between our head and our body. So we're in a really great spot. Like before, we're gonna curve from the previous leg and bring the tip of our legs outwards to balance our spider. We'll curve around and close this leg off. For our last leg, we're gonna do something just a tiny bit different. We're gonna go ahead and put that leg facing a little more toward the back of our spider or toward the abdomen to balance the weight of our spider out. So curving from our previous leg along the abdomen, we're gonna make that same curve we're gonna make the S shape, but as we make our S shape, we're gonna bring it back along the side of our abdomen. Again, we're gonna make a U-turn and curve around before following that line back up to make our spider's back leg. Now we're ready to go ahead and add the legs to the other side of our spider. Now we're gonna follow the same procedure here, but it's important to keep in mind that parts of your leg may be hidden by the spider's body. And that's important because it helps us add some depth to our piece. Moving from our pedipalp, we're gonna make that same S shape and curve it outwards to make our first of these legs. We'll curve around and follow that line upward before closing it against the body. This time, we're not gonna make that top curve because again, we're not gonna see that part of the leg behind our spider. We'll move our next leg a little bit higher, make that same S-shaped curve, and if it touches that front leg, that's okay. Our third leg, as before, is going to fall around where the carapace meets the abdomen or where the head meets the body. So here we're going to draw another S-shaped leg. And I'm actually going to tuck that leg in behind my second leg. And I'm going to imagine where that curve would fall to draw the ends just peeking out there. Now our final leg again is going to look a little bit different. Because that leg is gonna be hidden behind the body, we're just gonna follow where we left off on our previous limb, and we're gonna draw what looks like a curved line, maybe half an oval or a rainbow shape. Then, following this line, we're gonna go ahead and make another little oval, which is the tip of our foot peeking out there. And if you want, you can go ahead and add a little line and a smaller rainbow inside to give the hint of the curve of that leg. Awesome, now we're ready to go in and start adding our details. Now, the Mexican red knee tarantula is another name for the Smith's red knee tarantula. And these tarantulas, like other tarantulas, have what are called urticating hairs, which means they have hair all over their body. 
but this hair isn't like your hair or my hair. This hair is special. It's pointed and it can actually be used against prey or predators for protection. Now when humans touch it, we just get really itchy, but it's an important feature of this tarantula, so we're gonna go ahead and draw that in. To do this, we're gonna go ahead and go along the lines of our spider with a zigzagging motion. So starting around the head, I'm gonna follow along and make these zigzagging lines. And you can go back later and erase your guiding lines to make this look a little more clean. Now these tarantulas can actually use their legs to scrape these hairs from their abdomen and throw them at predators. And I'm gonna hold off for one second on adding this hair to my legs. Now, the pedipalp of a tarantula, including the Smith's Red Knee tarantula, is broken into four sections. We can make these sections by just drawing a horizontal line along the length of our leg to make four sections. And we're gonna repeat this process on our other pedipalp. On the tarantula's eight legs, there are actually five sections. So we're gonna use that same horizontal line technique, except this time we're going to use four lines to cut the legs into five sections. And if on your back legs you can't show all the sections, that's okay. If you want to add some extra dimension to your tarantula, what you can do is go along these lines and as you make each new section, you can make the lines come a little bit closer together so it looks like the legs are narrowing as they come to their ends. And if you have time, you can go back and erase any guiding lines. I'm gonna pause there, and you guys can go ahead and take your time and go back and do this at your own pace. But I'm gonna start adding these urticating hairs along our legs because they do have them there too. So again, I'm just gonna follow along my legs with a zigzagging motion to add some texture to our tarantula. Now the Mexican red knee tarantula, again, another name for the Smith's red knee tarantula, gets its name in part from where it's located. These tarantulas can be found in Mexico, which is in Central America. Now, most species of tarantulas are found in Central and South America, as well as in Africa, in habitats such as jungles and rainforests. The second part of their name, which is red knee, comes from their bright coloring that they find along their knees or limbs and parts of their abdomen and bodies. Now, when you finish your piece, some good ideas to add some extra detail are to go back and add some of this bright coloring or go in and add shadowing underneath your tarantula, tarantula to make it look like it's jumping off the page. And there you have it. One Smith's Red Knee Tarantula. Here's a picture that I drew earlier to give you an idea of where to start with coloring if you decide to do that. Thank you so much Fullerton Scholars for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning as much about this amazing animal as I did. Bye. Wow.
I have to say I was a little nervous about that one. I'm not a huge spider fan, but I'm gonna tell you what, Melissa, after this lesson, I have a new appreciation for the tarantula. So thank you very much. On behalf of everyone here at FSD TV, my name is Mark Sunny. Have a great day.